If you have studied Java concurrency for a while, there's a chance you have come across articles or videos praising single-threaded designs. If you have, you might also have wondered why single-threaded designs should be better than multi-threaded designs. I will try to answer that question in this video. Single-threaded designs grew out of server designs such as web and TCP server designs. This diagram here illustrates a simplistic single-threaded server design. And just to be clear, this is not a good design. This is not a good single-threaded design. So basically what is happening here is that we have a server which is represented by a server socket, as you can see up here. While the server is running, we have a thread here that is executing the server code. And while the server is running, it is calling this server socket.accept this accept method here will block until an inbound connection arrives at the server so until a client is trying to connect to the server um, once a client tries to connect to the server accept will return and you will get a, a socket which represents the inbound connection and from the uh, connection you can get an input stream and then you can read data that is sent from the client to the server this read call here is also blocking until there is actually data to read from the input stream, uh, which is connected to this inbound connection here. So basically, that means that the server, the thread here, the single thread here that is executing the server is blocked both while calling accept, but also while reading from the um, the input stream connected to the connection and in fact it would also be blocked while trying to write data back through the output stream connected to this connection so the consequence of this is that one while this thread here is reading from one connection and it is blocked in a read call it is unable to accept other uh, new inbound connections coming into the server because it's busy in the read calls it it cannot call accept so um, basically what happens is that this kind of design here is only able to handle a single client that is connected to the server at a time this is of course not a very uh, scalable single threaded design the first step in solving the problems with the single threaded design that I showed you in the previous slide is to expand the design with one more thread. Now thread 2 still ag calls server socket accept and thus accepts inbound connections, but as soon as a connection has been accepted, it hands off that connection to another thread, thread 2 here. And then thread 1 can go um, back immediately to calling server socket accept and be ready for the next client that wants to connect to the server. This way we have solved the problem with thread 1 being busy uh, processing um, inbound data or sending a response back so that other clients that want to connect cannot um, yeah, have their connections accepted. This way thread 1 can immediately return and accept the next connection and the next connection. Now this design is also not um, super perfect because thread 2 here um, still is only able to process one connection at a time. So it can read data from one connection and write a response back. And if that connection is very slow at sending data, then all these other connections, they have to wait until this very slow connection has sent all this data to thread 2 and thread 2 has sent a response back, maybe over a very slow connection, before the next connection here gets a chance to actually interact with the server, right? So the connection is open, uh, can open fast now, but the server will appear somewhat unresponsive. A simple solution is to simply add more worker threads here in the background of the server. That basically means that for each worker thread you add, the server can handle another connection concurrently. So if you have 10 threads, 10 worker threads, then this server here can handle 10 connections concurrently. If you have 100 worker threads, the server can handle 100 um, concurrent connections. Thread 1 here accepts new incoming connections and write them into a queue 
from which the background worker threads take these connections and process the requests and send back responses as fast as they can. And that means that even though you only have maybe 10 or 20 background worker threads, it is still possible for hundreds or thousands of clients to connect to the server because the connections will simply get queued here in within this queue and then these background threads will process them as fast as they can. So if a lot of clients are connecting at the same time, they will be able to open the connections to the server, but the server will be a little bit slow at processing their requests, right? Because then this queue here will contain maybe a thousand connections and these 10 worker threads here can only process 10 at a time. So it will take the server some time to work its way through this long queue here, right? But um, at least the clients are not denied um, denied a connection to the server. This kind of design works reasonably well for web servers where the um, each connection is relatively short lived and the requests um, are relatively fast to process and it's fast to send back a response. However, for a chat server where the connections are maybe open for hours and each um, client is not sending data that often, maybe um, maybe only once every minute or every two minutes, then this design is not uh, super good because um, while a thread here, a background thread here is trying to is, is trying to read from a connection, it is blocked, right? So if you have 10 threads, 10 worker threads here waiting to read data from 10 inbound connections, and these uh, connections are not very active, so they're not sending data that often. Well, then these threads are just blocked doing absolutely nothing in the meantime. And these 10 threads here will not be able to properly serve thousands of inbound um, connections. So we need a different design for something like a chat server with many open connections, long lived connections, and um, not very active connections, right? There's a lot of idle time on each connection. Java also has a non-blocking I.O. API and by non-blocking I.O. is meant that the API does not block the thread that uh, is trying to either um, read or write data to and uh, from and to sockets. That means that a single thread is able to first check one connection and see if it has anything to read and if it does not have anything to read then that read method returns immediately and the thread can then continue off to the second connection and the third connection. So uh, that means that um, a single thread is capable of reading um, data from more than one connection uh, concurrently, not at the exact same time, but uh, since data usually arrives with a little bit of delay, in each of these connections or from each of these connections, then a single thread can actually process the data from multiple connections. The same is, tr is true when writing uh, back uh, data back to the connections, then the thread will just write as much as it can. And then when it cannot write anymore, instead of blocking until all the data that it wants to write is, is written to the connection, it simply, the, the write method simply returns and then the thread has to come back at a later time and try to write some more. The way this is done is by registering the connections with a selector. And then this one thread here is actually capable of selecting the threads, uh, not the threads, the connections that have any data ready to read or the connections that are ready to have data written to them. And in that way, the thread here, this single thread here can focus its attention on the active connections. When we use the Java non-blocking IO API, we no longer have to worry about having a lot of long lived, not very active connections anymore, because this thread here that is processing, handling these uh, connections is only focusing on the active connections. Thus, all the inactive connections, they are just out here in the in the dark until they become active. So 
we don't have the problem that inactive connections will take up the attention of the processing thread. This design also has another advantage, which is actually the main advantage that single-threaded designs are being praised for. This design only has a single thread at any time calling uh, your business logic. And that means that when you implement the business logic, you do not have to worry about multiple threads sharing any components in here in the business logic. And that makes the implementation of these components a whole lot simpler when you don't have to worry about deadlock or threat signaling or any of these uh, pretty complex concurrency issues that can arise in multi-threaded applications. This design is not perfect though. If thread two here needs to make some kind of IO call using a blocking IO API, then of course this thread here will be blocked while it's making that um, IO call. For instance, if it was trying to download something using the Java URL class, which uses blocking IO underneath, then thread two here would be blocked while it was downloading from the remote server and until the, the entire response was read again. Unless, of course, it was capable of contacting that server using non-blocking IO, but that is the problem with this design that in case you are forced to use blocking IO, then you can block the main thread here. So that is one of the problems. And another problem is that this single thread here is not able to utilize all the CPU cores in a modern server. The modern servers often have four to eight different CPU cores, some have even more. And if you're only using one thread, then there will only ever be one uh, CPU core engaged in processing all the requests from the clients here, which is maybe um, underutilizing the server's hardware. A simple way to improve this design is simply to scale up from one uh, processing thread here to M processing threads, which is one thread Per CPU and if you do that then you will be able to uh, utilize all of the CPUs in the machine. In order to still get the advantage of the uh, single threaded design uh, from before, now that you have multiple threads processing these um, connections, you have to make sure that um, once a connection here has been handed off to a specific thread or assigned to a specific, specific thread, that only this same thread will ever process data from this connection. And this thread will also have to have its own copy of the business logic, which is only ever getting called by this same thread. And so this other thread here will have to process uh, its own set of connections and it has its own copy of the business logic and components down here which are never shared with this thread up here. That way we get the benefits of the single threaded design that we don't have any concurrency issues inside of the business logic here while at the same time being able to scale from uh, one thread to M threads. I refer to this kind of design as same threaded because it is not actually single threaded anymore. We have now multiple threads here, but we still get the advantages of having the same thread called the business logic and the connections here at all times. Um, it is just that each thread here has its own set of business logic and connections assigned to it. But once they are assigned, the same thread will always call the same objects here. So that is why I refer to it as same threaded. In order for this server design to perform well, you need some kind of load balancing mechanism between thread one, which accepts the inbound connections and the um, threads that are processing the inbound connections. If you do not have a, a sensible load balancing mechan mechanism here, you risk that all the connections are assigned to one thread and that means that you're underutilizing the hardware and then the clients get a worse experience of interacting with the server than what they could have had.
If the business logic needs to perform some kind of blocking operation, such as downloading a file uh, using a blocking I.O. API, then you can twist this design a little bit by adding some worker thread pools here in the background. The business logic here can then hand off such blocking I.O. operations to a worker thread, which can then contact a remote server or connect to a database through JDBC or whatever it needs to do. And then this thread can remain blocked uh, while this operation is taking place. And then it wakes up again and it can send a response back to the foreground thread here. Now in the meantime, the foreground thread can continue processing everything that it can do on its own without the need of a background thread. So in that way, you can uh, still uh, call um, blocking I.O. operations while the foreground thread here remains active. This design is decent, but it is not perfect. Imagine that you have uh, two connections assigned to the same thread. Imagine then that the first connection sends a message that takes 10 seconds to process, and the second uh, connection sends a message that takes maybe 100 milliseconds to process. If the first message here can be fully processed on the main thread here on the foreground thread, then the second um, message here, the second request will not be processed until the first request here is fully processed. And if that takes 10 seconds, then uh, this uh, request here will have a latency of 10 seconds before it starts executing. And the client that is connected to that um, connection will then experience that the server is slow at responding. The problem is caused by these messages being executed serially by this foreground thread here. It is actually possible to create a design where this foreground thread splits its execution time up among all the requests that it has currently received. And that way a single long running request will not block the thread for um, the other uh, requests here. Instead they will be executed concurrently semi-parallelly but since it's a, simple, a single thread, it's not truly in parallel, it's only concurrently. I refer to such a design as single-threaded concurrency. Um, it is a little bit complicated to explain how to implement it, so I will leave that for a future video. That's all for this video about single-threaded and same-threaded designs. Remember to check out the description below this video for a link to a textual version of this tutorial as well as links to other related tutorials. And if you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you want to watch more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel.